Hello student. So let us start our discussion. In previous discussion uh, or in previous tutorial, we have discussed uh, various solution related to the uh, data dependency and uh, branch difficulty. Here we will try to discuss the risk pipeline. So if we uh, remember or if we recall the characteristics of risk, okay, then uh, we have discussed that uh, there is a general register organization. So we will have uh, many number of general register into the CPU. So most of the operand will be uh, retrieved into the register so it will actually uh, save them uh, uh, time to memory access and uh, for data dependency if or uh, resource conflict uh, previously we have discussed uh, resource conflict so where uh, multiple segment will try to access the same uh, memory okay so for example one segment will try to access the memory for uh, uh, open and another uh, segment will try to access the memory for uh, instruction so at that time it will lead into the uh, lock so uh, that will create unnecessary delay so uh, how uh, risk pipeline will be implemented so in uh, risk pipeline uh, most of the operand will be in register so that will be the advantage and uh, we will have multi port memory okay so one port uh, will be used to uh, read the instruction from the memory and another port will be used to uh, you can say retrieve the operand from the memory as well as uh, another advantage of uh, risk is that uh, it will have fixed length format okay so all the instruction can be executed into the uh, one cycle or we can implement uh, hardware uh, for that why because uh, all the instruction will have fixed format while in case of Cisco what will happen we will have a variable length format so we have to decode the instruction and then accordingly we have to retrieve the operand so uh, based on the addressing mode uh, that uh, uh, decoding process or the retrieving the operand process will take uh, different amount of time so uh, let us uh, try to focus on risk pipeline so in risk pipeline uh, first phase will be the instruction fetch okay so via uh, multiport memory next will be uh, execute the instruction into the uh, ALU or you can say we will retire the operand and then it will be executed in this uh, this phase and last phase we will uh, store the result so it can be used by uh, someone uh, some other segment here uh, in risk pipeline there will be two problem delayed load and delayed branch so while we have discussed the branch difficulty solution at that time we have seen that higher level uh, uh, higher level compilers will rearrange the instruction in such a way that uh, it will uh, efficiently use the pipeline so here we will try to understand this example and in delay load also we have discussed that uh, how we can uh, uh, so how we can resolve the uh, you can say data dependency so uh, that we will try to discuss so let us start in first clock cycle this instruction means uh, loading the value into uh, register r1 uh, let's say from memory location x okay so at this time this will be in phase one okay so which is phase i at next clock cycle uh, loading the memory uh, loading the memory location of y content loading the content of memory location y into register r2 so this will be in first stage and uh, here this will be in next stage means execute the instruction so i a here in uh, next clock cycle this instruction will be uh, here it will be in first phase this instruction will be in second phase and this instruction will be in last phase okay next clock cycle this will be in uh, second phase this will be in last phase now here there will be the problem while we will try to perform the addition of r1 and r2 okay uh, there won't be any problem with the r1 okay but there will be problem with the r2 why because at this stage the result will be stored into the register r2 okay it is not yet stored okay so uh, we, we may not get the exit value or appropriate value into the r2 we may get the old value 
so uh, this will create the uh, problem okay so if we try to execute instruction in uh, this way okay let's say here uh, we will try to perform the addition okay then instead of the value or from memory location y we will get some other value into uh, r2 okay so uh, it will uh, lead to the problem okay and then in next clock cycle uh, here it will be in first phase this will be in second phase okay and uh, here this will be in last phase okay so accordingly uh, instruction will be executed so how this problem will be solved so for that uh, we will put delay uh, between those two consecutive instruction okay here the, there is a problem uh, between this second load and this add okay so how it will be resolved so let us try to uh, find the solution uh, re rewrite the solution using load okay so here this will be in first phase at next clock cycle this will be in first phase and first instruction will be in second phase okay at uh, next clock cycle knob will be in first phase this will be in second phase and uh, first instruction will be in third phase means uh, after this r1 will be available into load at next clock cycle what will happen add will be in first phase no will be in second phase and loading value r2 it will be in third phase so at end of this cycle the value of r means whatever value of y is there on memory location okay it will be loaded into r2 now at next clock cycle if we try to find out then this will be in phase 1 this will be in phase 2 this will be in phase 3 now you see whenever we will try to perform addition in accumulator okay into step number 5 we will have updated value into r1 and r2 so in r1 we will have x and in r2 we will have y okay and then whatever addition we will perform uh, we will get the appropriate result so in next clock cycle uh, this will be in end phase this will be in uh, you can say second phase likewise okay so then uh, execution will continue so uh, this is how delayed load will help in uh, maintain the data dependency okay previously in 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 this scenario uh, data dependency will cause a problem okay we will not get updated value why because the instruction is not executed and here we will try to perform the addition of r1 and r2 while here uh, we will try to perform the addition of r1 and r2 this both instruction are executed properly so x and y will be loaded into r1 and r2 and then we can use the updated value of uh, r1 and r2 now let us try to discuss uh, delayed branch so what will happen here uh, in first clock cycle first instruction will be in i okay in next clock cycle second instruction will be in first phase and first instruction will be in second phase here in third clock cycle uh, this instruction will be in phase i then uh, this instruction will be in phase a means second phase and this instruction will be in last phase at next clock cycle uh, this instruction will be in phase 1 this instruction will be in phase 2 and this instruction will be in last phase now at next clock cycle um, this will be in phase 1 this will be in phase 2 this instruction will be in phase 3 okay and uh, again in next clock cycle this will be in phase 1 nop 
this instruction will be in phase 2 this instruction will be in phase 3 okay here you can see uh, uh, let me write down all the steps so uh, you can understand that uh, how it will be executed here then this second knob will be in phase 1 uh, this knob will be in phase 2 and this branch instruction will be in phase 3 okay next clock cycle this will be in phase 1 this will be in phase 2 this will be in phase 3 okay and uh, at last clock cycle this will be this instruction will be in next phase second phase this instruction will be in execution phase now here if you try to understand or if you try to observe okay then after branch uh, we have put two no op operation okay means uh, uh, once we, uh, once there will be the branch instruction we will put two no op operation so why we will do that uh, put two no op operation here uh, here you can see while there is a branch okay uh, this instruction a dot what okay it is in third phase and this instruction it is in second phase so uh, we have to wait till this both instruction means add r1 and subtract r2 both are over okay so at 5 we can see we are having branch instruction so after branch we will add two knob operation so once the branch is over in seventh uh, step okay in eighth step whatever instruction will be there it will be from branching location okay now here you can see this add and subtraction uh, are not dependent on branch okay so here let me uh, draw a figure and uh, let me tell you that uh, how it will work so you can have idea you don't get confused with the theory okay so at the timing signal 7 okay or step number 7 let's say there is a branch on this location okay so uh, previous all execution instruction execution will be over and then on step number seven whatever instruction execution will be there it will be from branching location okay still uh, this instruction are it to be executed okay now what we can do uh, here these instructions are not dependent or let's say some of these instruction are not dependent on the branch okay so what we can do can we bring those instruction into the pipeline so uh, we can uh, efficiently use the pipeline here you can see here uh, uh, during uh, this clock cycle uh, uh, means uh, step number six uh, first segment will be idle then in next clock cycle uh, let's say uh, first segment second segment will be idle and in uh, next clock cycle you can say uh, second and third will be the idle okay only first will be utilized so this is creating problem okay in utilization of pipeline so how it will be overcome by rearranging the instruction okay so if instructions are not dependent on branch okay we can uh, put the branch above the instruction and then we can start the execution okay listen the, uh, the, just try to understand this y is from location uh, y okay this instruction is from location y okay so uh, this is from branching uh, position or branching address so let us try to execute let us try to simulate this scenario so you can have idea like timing signal uh, or first step this will be in phase number one at next step this will be in phase number one and uh, this will be in phase number two at next step uh, branch this will be in phase number one and this increment will be in phase number two and load will be in phase number three at next clock cycle this will be means addition will be in phase number one branch will be in phase number two 
and this will be in phase number three at next clock cycle this will be in phase number one this will be in phase number two and this will be in phase number three branch at next clock cycle last instruction means instruction from branching location it will be in phase one this will be in phase two or segment two this will be in segment three let's say there is another instruction decrement after this okay so this will be in phase one then this instruction will be in phase two this instruction will be in phase three okay at next clock pulse let's say this will be in phase two this will be in phase three here what is the advantage you can see here we were having the uh, unnecessary delay okay now means pipeline was uh, idle it was not doing anything while here you can see uh, at stage number five at step number five the instruction branch is over so in next step the instruction will be uh, from branching location meanwhile in between we will complete the uh, execution of instruction addition and subtraction which are not uh, dependent on branch okay so during that time means while the instruction is being fetched from the branching location okay uh, we will utilize the pipeline efficiently okay so this is how a delayed uh, branch will be uh, implemented in this pipeline by rearranging the instruction so this task will be done by the uh, compiler this is the support from the uh, you can say risk compiler so uh, in this uh, topic or in this tutorial we will keep up to this in next tutorial we will start our discussion with the vector processing okay thank you